Hi, I'm TR and this is my Mid-Century Ranch Home Renovation Project. Another day, another hole in the wall. Yeah, I'm uh, still working on getting the final patches done. I've got all the rest of the house rough filled, so all of the major patches uh, are done. And I've got my first skim coat of uh, sheetrock mud over them. I started on the living room yesterday. And uh, I've got a lot, well, I've got all the trim out. I pulled up all the tackless or the tack strip. Um, but I had a little uh, technical error and uh, didn't get a lot of that recorded. Um, apparently my battery ran down and I was paying more attention to what I was doing than uh, what I was recording, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I uh, didn't quite get to all of the good stuff recorded. So that huge patch right there is the result of, there was a huge bank of curtains hanging here and it looked like when they were probably trying to hang them at the, whenever they hung them. And I kind of derived that from about 1982 because in that hole up there, I found a bunch of newspaper wadded up and shoved in there. They were trying to fill the hole. And then there was a huge bunch of, like, looked like almost like concrete. It didn't look like mortar to me, but I suppose it could have been. And anyway, I just said, you know what? I'm going to cut that out and patch it. And so today I'll be filling that with the heavy fill, the fix-it mud. I've gotten pretty good with that after five or six or seven days or so of uh, patching these huge holes in the walls. I've got the carpets peeled back, and I'm... Happy with what I found on the floors. There's a couple stains here and there that might be tough to work through, but I'm just gonna count those as patina. But let me give you a quick view of the floors. So like I've said, I'm uh, leaving the carpets in place to protect the floors, but I did go around and I did remove all the tack strip. It's a pain in the butt. It never wants to come off nicely, but if you look at the back of this carpet, those are pet stains, and uh, that's part of the smell, and I think I'm finally getting ahead of the smell in the house. Of course, every house that's not yours has a smell, but, you know, so here's like an example of a stain uh, from, a pet, from a pet peeing on the carpet, and of course, you can see that uh, they, when they probably did a remodel in 1982, as I mentioned, I guessed, <clears throat> the... Uh, they just painted, they didn't you know, have anything down on the floors. It's not worrisome because this is all gonna sand right up. It scrapes right off in the first place. But I'm really happy with the floors, they look good. I mean, you know, there's some, there's some mess and there's a little bit of mortar slop here from this old hearth and those sorts of things. But that's all gonna sand right out, I'm pretty sure. So, pretty happy with the floors. So that's the plan for today. We're gonna to get everything patched in here. I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna mix some mud. I'm gonna go and, fin and finish up some of the other patches that I did the rough patch on. And hopefully the camera will hold up today and I'll be able to show you a lot of that. Some of the other stuff that's going on here is, is I had some really bad alleg alligatoring of the paint in here. And so I peeled it back. I'm gonna patch these with sheetrock mud uh, and clean them all up and sand them down nice and neat. You can see I've got all the trim off all the doors with the exception of the front door here. And then the entrance into the kitchen, those will come off today. A little bit more of that alligatoring. And let me see, I kind of picked a lot of it out, but let me see if I can find a spot because I think I remembered seeing one somewhere here of the paint. There's another example of it. Oh, yeah, there's one right there. So right here under that window, that's that alligatoring I'm talking about. And I believe what that's caused by is moisture getting in and uh, causing the paint to blister a little bit. It peels right out. I'll show you real quick here. You know, I just get underneath it with a scraper like that. And then you get underneath it and just peel it right out. So the neighbors are replacing their roof, and so there's a crew over there uh, banging in some shingles. You'll hear a bunch of popping. You'll have to ignore it. And uh, of course, the Tweety Birds in the background. I don't know if you can hear those either, but. I'm on my third bag of Fix-It-All, and this stuff 
sets like concrete. In fact, I have a bucket full of concrete I'll send you for a small fee. <laughs> it gets ahead of you really fast. I found that uh, working early in the morning like this when it's somewhat cooler, it's got cloudy overnight, so it's supposed to be pretty warm today. Uh, and it didn't really cool off last night. But I'm going to go ahead and mix up a little batch of this and finish the last little bits of uh, wall repair I need to do. But before I get ahead of myself, I want to go and do the glue water on all these patches. All right, here it is. It was in the kitchen. We're just going to add a good blob of glue there. We'll add some water. And we're just going to mix this up real quick with this paintbrush. Now, I've been using this paintbrush for this glue for about a week now. And uh, it's still perfectly good. This is a cheap $2 paintbrush. I just washed it out like a normal paintbrush, and it's holding up pretty good. So we're just going to mix this up. <clears throat> the reason I do this first is because it takes a minute for the glue. You want to wait till it gets sticky. Tacky, I guess, is the technical term for it. We're just going to mix a little bit of this up. Make sure we got it pretty well mixed up. And we'll just come over here. And I got one little patch right here to do around this outlet box. Again, just really carefully working it into the margins around this cracked out area. Uh, that helps stick these other pieces down. Make sure they don't continue to crack. We're going to put that stabilizer on this wall anyway. But And then I paint the field, which it recommends you get this wet anyway. And I'm just using the glue water to do that. I'm going to move over here and do these other holes. And then this was a crack that was filled with, looked like uh, probably caulking. And it was a half-ass fill. I've ground that all out dug it all out, we're going to fix it properly. Paint this in here. And let's see, we got another little spot right here we want to catch, right underneath this window. In fact, there was one right there that I almost forgot about. And then clear over here where you're not going to be able to see. And then we got a little patch to do right here. One of the things I've done is I've uh, got these tin paint pails. They were 250 or so from Home Depot. Again, not sponsored. But when I'm mixing this powder, I've been wearing a mask. And then I like to start with just a little dash of water in there. I need to get a drill. And plug it in so I'm ready. I'm going to finish up bag number two here. And I'm going to make up a pretty good sized batch here. And add a little bit more water and mix thoroughly. So we're pretty much ready. This is just a little thin, so I'm just going to let it set for a minute because it sets up fast. you got about 10 minutes to work with this stuff. Okay, so I've uh, fixed quite a few of these cracks, and I've already gone over this with this glue water. It does a couple things. One, it helps to seal down these edges so that they don't continue to peel up. It pre-wets the plaster, so uh, that helps with the uh, mud itself. This is the fix-it-all. I found that on these big pieces like this, it's easier to use my hawk and trowel than it is to use a taping knife. And for just a little extra security, I'm going to put up a piece of this uh, fiberglass mesh tape over this crack here. I don't think it'll stick, so I'm going to have to 
Gonna have to do a, a quick bed on it. So let's do that. Just so we got something to stick that in. Okay, so I'm just gonna embed that in that uh, fix it that I just put up there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just enough to stick it in there. Now, I'm gonna grab my hawk and some of this mud. This is about the consistency of cake batter. I'm just gonna grab a hunk, get some in there. That's it. Move on to the next one. <clears throat> Bert's gonna have to wait. Since I got hot mud here. All right, that'll get us there. Okay, I'm gonna hurry here. This stuff's setting up already. Pretty warm, so it's setting up fast. I'm gonna have to hurry. This thing's it's going off. So let me make a quick comment here about cleanup. When this stuff starts to set, you have like a couple of minutes max. Once it starts to firm up in the pail to get it washed out. Do not wash it out in your sink, dump it down the toilet or anything like that because it sets underwater and it's gonna turn into concrete in your toilet. So basically your best bet is just to take it outside and wash it off. And that's what I've done. So, and then I'll come back in and I kind of just clean everything up with a damp rag. I got a dry rag right there. So I'll just use this one just to dry off the tools. And again, I can't overemphasize this. Do not rinse this down your sink or down the toilet or in your laundry sink or anywhere else in your household plumbing because it sets underwater and it's gonna just cause a heck of a mess with your drains. So be careful about that. But other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now we're gonna wait about 15 minutes for this to set up quite a bit. And then we'll go back with this five inch knife and we'll scrape off all the high spots but you gotta wait for it enough to firm up, just enough, and uh, I'll show you that when we get there. But we had about 10 minutes, and it says right on the bag, don't mix up any more than you can use in about 10 minutes, and they mean it. Because uh, as I said, well, that's what you get. <laughs> and that's the better one. I have another one like this. Well, I don't anymore because it went in the dumpster, but it had a half inch of concrete in the bottom of it I couldn't get out, and it wasn't worth saving. Okay, more later. See ya.